Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. And today, how does God treat a person who's troubled by a heavier kind of cross, a disorder that makes it harder to resist temptation and to do good? Some people seem to think that God will alter the minds of these people in perfecting them, taking away some of the motivations that once drove them. Is there any reason to think that, however? Let's look at some of the Bible verses that address, or seem to address, this issue. And the Pharisees, seeing it, said to his disciples, Why doth your master eat with publicans and sinners? But Jesus, hearing it, said, They that are in health need not a physician, but they that are ill. Go then, and learn what this meaneth. I will have mercy, and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the just, but sinners. Matthew 9, 11-13 Jesus isn't saying that the righteous have no place in heaven, but only that he offers a special call to those in need of it, just as a doctor gives special treatment to a sick person. For this reason, God will do more to help some people find him than he will for others, and oddly, do them a greater honor because of their problems. Jesus also doesn't say that sacrifice is bad, it's needed for authentic penance, but only that it can't make up for a lack of mercy or an unwillingness to show mercy to others because of their sins. They answered him, We are the seed of Abraham, and we have never been slaves to any man. How sayest thou, You shall be free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say unto you, that whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the son abideth for ever. If therefore the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8, 33-36 It's important to keep in mind that what kind of action is sinful is heavily dependent on the circumstances. For instance, sex with a wife versus sex with a mistress. In the same way, to be freed from sin doesn't imply that the person is being brainwashed or deprived of some motivation they had before, but could just mean that the circumstances drastically change to make sinful acts impossible, in such a way that the good things people seek through sin are still available to them. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! For we that are dead to sin, how shall we live any longer therein? Romans 6, 1-2 Again, this is perfectly compatible with the theory that heaven is mainly a change of circumstances, with sin through our normal actions becoming impossible. When the greatest good things can all be acquired through methods other than sin, there's no longer any reason to commit them. Paul even mentions this in the seventh chapter of Romans. Therefore, whilst her husband liveth, she shall be called an adulteress, if she be with another man. But if her husband is dead, she is delivered from the law of her husband, so that she is not an adulteress if she be with another man. Romans 7, 3 With our minds, we can recognize the value of the promise of God and try to plan ahead by following the commandments of God, which we know will lead to greater happiness and fulfillment than temporary pleasure. Nevertheless, the body craves that temporary pleasure regardless, and can be hard to resist. While the Bible never refers to disorders in the modern way, it mentions sins and temptations a lot, and in that sense, almost everyone has a disorder that makes it hard to avoid evil and do good. It's called concupiscence. Some people may be tempted more strongly and in ways that others aren't, but we all have to make a choice whether to prioritize our relationship with God and the immeasurable safety and rewards that follow from it, or our immediate desires and concerns. However, there's nothing in the New Testament that specifically says that God will prevent the saints from wanting the things that motivated them in this life, even if those same motives may once have made them vulnerable to sinful temptations, while in an imperfect state of being. We only know that in heaven, they won't actually be able to sin, no matter what they like or want. Next, what's required in order for a person to have charity? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.